My name is Bruce Ravalli and I teach sociology at the University of Victoria. I remember giving a last lecture on a Thursday afternoon and that Sunday and Monday the campus was closed and courses went online. And what I remember feeling and thinking about at the time that surprised me was how quickly the discussion evolved to thinking about university only as conveying a bunch of information from an instructor to students. And I think we missed that real opportunity to educate the public and our colleagues about what really happens at university. I think a lot of our education that we give certainly occurs in classrooms, but it also occurs over a beer, a glass of wine, at coffee, in between courses, before or after a shift at work. But I think the gift that we really have as teachers and on university campuses is that in our lectures we often introduce concepts, ideas and theories that students have never heard before. And often those discussions and those concepts inform the discussions they have at coffee shops, at beer parlors, and with friends in the dorm rooms before and after class. So what surprised me was the quick discussion in that neoliberal tradition that what we do we can simply package and distribute electronically. I think the best things we do as educators is have our students think about the world in a different way. And I certainly don't want to miss this opportunity to change how we teach, but also to celebrate the very best things we do as teachers and not lose sight of that in this post-COVID world. If I were to give any of my colleagues some advice on moving their courses onto online learning, I guess I'd ask you to consider two things. First, Think about what you do well and what you might need help with that technology may help you with when you move online. And second, what do you want your students to achieve in your courses? For that first idea, thinking about what you do well, if you're a good lecturer and, and you can cover a lot of interesting materials for your students, in the online world, maybe that's best done in a video that you present, you package, you edit, and you present to your students. Maybe it's a series of blog posts where you simply discuss different issues in the media, contemporary society, theory, something that you do in your courses, to let students see the world as you see it. So I really want you to caution yourself on what technology you're going to use and why to make your teaching more effective, better, also to compensate on some of the things that you need to improve upon. Second, I want you to think about what the students' lives must be like in this post-COVID world where maybe they're taking three or four different university or college courses online with four or five different instructors having four or five different sets of expectations. So I'd ask you to be very reasonable in your expectations of your students. If you want them to learn a lot of the course content like concepts and theories, a good vehicle to do that are many of the supplementary materials that are provided for textbook these days. They have online testing strategies that can help you grade and assess your students over the term. They can provide links to YouTube videos, etc. So there's many resources out there. I would just caution any new person moving online is to not just rush into 50 different techniques and technologies, but really think about what you are good at, what you need some help with, and what your students want to achieve over the rest of the semester. So be thoughtful, practical, methodical, and certainly have some compassion with all those students that are facing so many different demands in this post-COVID world. What I learned about myself in the move to online learning in this post-COVID world came as a bit of a surprise, and I always knew I liked teaching, but how much I missed the classroom. I miss that feeling when you're given a great lecture, when the students are giving you that indication that they're learning about something they've never thought about before, when you can make them laugh, when you can make them have that deep, thoughtful moment where they question everything they've learned before. I miss those moments. I miss students diligently working, diligently asking questions, meeting their friends in class, all of those things I miss. What I've also learned and been gratified to see is so much of the social media today talking about how students want to learn from somebody they can trust who is talking about things that person is an expert in. So I cherish those moments thinking about teaching again and I also am really gratified to know the important role that many of us play in our students' lives when we get to show them things for the first time. So it's not so much, I guess, what I've learned about myself over the last six months 
but how I've relearned being invigorated by my discipline, by the joy I have in teaching and meeting students.